Now we've completed building the geometry for the model and assigning the physical properties. We'll now generate a field solution. And we'll use just the default solver settings. We'll go to solution and solve. And we're done. Now uh, you'll notice that the, the two circles that had the volume currents assigned, they've been subdivided by uh, a number of small triangles. And that's because we use the boundary element method to generate the field solution. I'll just show you, uh, if we go to the solver setup dialog box, the default setting for Magneto is to solve, uh, generate the field solution using the boundary element method. We can also use finite elements or a hybrid, a combination of both finite and boundary elements. But we just use the default boundary element and the default is set to self-adaptive. So basically the program will uh, create the mesh it needs, calculate any errors, refine the mesh, and uh, generate the field solution. So with the boundary element method, you only require a, a mesh inside regions that have uh, physical properties such as volume currents or if they have nonlinear materials. Uh, otherwise you would have uh, boundary elements, which we'll show you in a later sample session. But for this simple model, where we only have current carrying coils and where there are no ferromagnetic uh, or permanent magnet materials, the only mesh we required is the subdivision of the current carrying regions. So now we've generated the field solution. Let's uh, proceed to do some quick analysis. One of the, the quickest ways to see if uh, you've uh, assigned everything properly is just to create an arrow plot of the B field. And uh, we'll set, say, a coarse density plot, and we'll just generate a quick field plot. Okay, now you'll notice that we have the arrows of the magnetic field in the region on the axis of the coil. They're very uniform in color, and they're all pointing in the positive y direction. Now that's consistent with the volume currents that we assigned. In a rotationally symmetric model, uh, we assign the currents um, using the right-hand rule. So basically when we assign a positive currents, that's as if the currents are circulating around the y-axis. And if you think of the right-hand rule, that would produce a magnetic field in the positive y-direction. Now that's uh, a very quick a very quick qualitative check on the uh, solution. Uh, for a more quantitative result, we'll do a graph of the B field Y component and we'll do it along the axis of the coil, right in the center. So we'll do a graph along a line 